Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mirha Sheba, student of BS Biotechnology from University of Management and Technology, Seattle. I'm here to present my presentation that is related to the RDX, which we can say Royal Demolition Explosive or Research Department Explosive. It was discovered by the George Frederick of Germany in 1989, but was firstly used in World War II. First of all, what is RDX? It is a high explosive of single compounds and it is the organic compound with the formula of O2N2CH2 whole three. It is a white solid without smell or taste, widely used as an explosive. Chemically, it is classified as a nitromide alongside HMX, while nitromide is a chemical compound with molecular formula H2NNO2 and it is a colorless solid. While the HMX is also an explosive, basically it is the man-made colorless liquid chemical which dissolves slightly in water and stands for highly melting magnetic explosives. RDX was used in one of the first plastic explosives and it is also known as cyclonide or hexogen. The chemical name of RDX is 135-trinitro-135-trinase. As you can see the structure of RDX in those pictures below. Next we have the synthesis of RDX, that how it is produced, how it is manufactured and what are the chemical reactions involved in the structure of or the synthesis of RDX explosive. As it is classified by the chemist as a hexahydro 135 triazine derivative, it is obtained by treating hexamine and white fuming nitric acid. This nitrolysis reaction also produces methylene dinitrate, ammonium nitrate, and water molecules as byproduct. Here we can see the reaction in which the methane amine hexamethylene tetramine reacts with the 10 molecules of HNO3, that is nitric acid, to produce RDX and ammonium nitrate with the three molecules of water. And you can also see the picture, ringed picture, ringed structure of RDX below. In this ringed structure, as you can see, a cyclic structure of RDX in which hexanitramine with alternating carbon and nitrogen atoms with nitro groups bonded to the three ring nitrogen atoms. Another topic related to this is the chemistry of RDX. RDX is produced by the nitrolysis of hexamine with nitric acid. There are basically two process two processes which are used for the production or the manufacturing of RDX. The first one is Batchman process and the another is the Woolwich process. First of all, we talk about the Batchman process in which the hexamine is reacted with nitric acid, ammonium nitrate, glacial acetic acid and acetic anhydride, and it is used in the United States first of all. The crude, product, the crude product in the result of this reaction is filtered and recrystallized to form RDX explosive. And the raw materials consist of hexamine and nitric acid, 98 to 99%. The another process in the production of RDX is the Woolwich process in which, uh, in which this is reacting with paraformaldehyde and ammonium nitrate in acetic anhydride. And this is the process which was firstly discovered in Canada. Here we have some applications of this explosive as it is a nitrimine explosive compound that can be utilized as a propellant gunpowder or high explosive. It is used in the both military and civilian applications. 
As a military explosive, RDX can be used alone as a base charge for detonators or mixed with another explosive such as TNT to form cyc cyclotols. TNT is also an explosive and cyclotols are also a kind of explosive having the mixtures of RDX and TNT. Uh, cyclotols have both the mixtures including TNT explosive and RDX explosive. RDX is one and a half times more powerful than TNT explosive and is easily initiated with mercury fulminate. Common military uses of RDX have been as an integrant ingredient in plastic bonding explosives or plastic explosives, which have been used as explosive fill in almost all types of munition compounds. Munition compounds are the chemicals used in the formulation as explosive and propellants in especially weapon systems. Next, we have some reactions that which are the reactions involved in the RDX or how RDX explosive react with another chemicals. So we have one reaction that is the reaction between ammonium per perchlorate and RDX. This is basically a thermal decomposition reaction in which RDX undergoes a thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition, as you know, that the use of heat in the decomposition process, and it requires the temperature of 150 degrees centigrade. This decomposition occurs in the presence of AP, which is also an explosive, is much faster. The catalytic decomposition of RDX in the presence of AP is autocatalytic or catalytic by AP explosive. Here we have some results of thermal decomposition of ammonium perchlorate. Following are the reactions in which in R1 reaction, the first one reaction, dissociative sublimation of NH4ClO4 occurs to produce NH3 and AClO4 occurs in the tandem decomposition of solids. While in the second reaction R2, it produces water, oxygen molecule, HCl, NO2, and N2O. Under low conflainment, dissociative sublimation, R1 and solid phase decomposition, R2, govern the decomposition kinetics. While in the third reaction, R3, under high confinement gas, R3 and gas phase R4 reactions also participate. But below 240 degrees centigrade, the solid only partially consisting of pure ammonium perchlorate. At higher temperatures, decomposition will be completed. Next, there are some properties of RDX. The first one is its appearance as it is white solid having molecular weight with 2 to 2.1, having the melting temperature 204 degrees Celsius, having high but lower when mixed with TNT explosive. Then we have the thermal ignition temperature that is 260 degrees centigrade and, this, and its stability is high, especially compared to the TNT and the, it is difficult to dissolve in organic liquid, so it is less soluble. Easily initiated by impact of friction, often coated with oil and wax. Here are some precautions. The first one is the packages containing such explosives must only be opened in a well-ventilated area and the vapors may build up in boxes during the storage. Next, the workers should use nitrile gloves to avoid the infections in hands. If it contact with eyes, mouth or skin, flush with copious amount of clean water and seek medical evidence as soon as possible. Also use protective goggles while using the tensile steel strapping to protect their eyes. Emergency plans are to be prepared for any reasonably foreseeable contingency. Use of non-electric detonators and burning fuses. 
keep the explosive away from the ignition sources and it should not be applied if additional safety measures are in place to control those sources of initiation and also ensure that the drivers of vehicles carrying such highly explosives are suitably and sufficiently trained. This is our topic and here are some references and I hope you understand this well. Thank you so much and Allah Hafiz.